Mina, say what, Lona here, sitting here with the man of the hour. Look at this face. Safety uh, for the Philadelphia Eagles going to the Super Bowl, Malcolm Jenkins. How are you, Malcolm? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy that you made some time on this very busy week, a couple of days away from the Super Bowl. How are you feeling right now? Feeling good. You know, we just wrapped up our last practice here uh, at the Nova Care facility. So uh, we're getting closer and closer to this game, getting ready to head out to Minnesota in a few days. Uh, but, you know, we're enjoying the, enjoying the preparation. How are you handling everything? Are you nervous, surprised? Like, how would you describe it right now? Uh, a little anxious. You know, it's, it's one of those things you, you realize that once we jump on this plane uh, to Minnesota that, you know, we're playing to, for a championship and, and there's, we're either going to come back a championship or a champion or not uh, on that flight back. So we want to make sure we do everything we can uh, so that we're celebrating on that, on that way back to Philly. Yeah. How are you preparing? Does it change now that you're preparing to play a Super Bowl? No, you try to keep everything as, as normal as possible. Uh, so even this week, we've we've prepared like we have a game on Monday. So we've kept our, our schedule and everything the same. When we get out to Minnesota, it's going to be a process, but we got to try to keep our preparation the exact same uh, so that we don't make it a bigger deal than it is. Right. You actually won a Super Bowl pretty early in your career with the Saints, yeah. but you were you were young. <laughs> You're a little bit older now. Is it different this time around? Yeah, it's it's, it's totally different. Uh, I was a rookie that year, so my head was already swimming, just trying to figure out what my place on the team was. Um, and that year just was was so crazy in itself. Um, and so I wasn't a starter. I didn't play as much, and I wasn't the leader on the team. Being here in Philly. Uh, that's never had the Super Bowl uh, win uh, on a team where, you know, I've been a leader, kind of the, the contrib main contributor. Uh, it's different, and uh, it's a different place to be and a different vantage point. But So I, I do feel a little bit more nervous than I did uh, <laughs> as a rookie, but uh, it's, it's a good feeling. What do you say to some of the younger guys that are experiencing this for the first time? Well, the biggest thing is um, – enjoy it yeah, that's one thing I, I remember my rookie year I was so nervous about playing in the Super Bowl that when we got down to the site I, I think we went out as a team on Monday and I never left the hotel after that <laughs> uh, and I can just remember or now when I talk about the Super Bowl I don't really have a ton of memories from that week of being out there and doing it because I didn't I didn't enjoy it so you know prepare like you need to block out the distractions but find small pockets where you can actually enjoy the fact that you're on the stage did you feel at a certain point in the season we're going all the way was like was there a defining moment where you're like we have it uh well I think pretty early on in the season we realized like we're we're a good team and we can we can make this run uh at, for me the turning point was after we lost to the Chiefs uh that's when I really realized like all right we have a team that's poised that's resilient um, that can can definitely win our division. And, and once you make the playoffs, you know, everything's out the window. And so as we kept going, um, I think that, that picture became more and more clear to, to other guys on the team, other guys uh, in the building, the city, the fan base. Um, but I think pretty early on we realized what we had. I was thinking about how you've been a part of um, a team that, you know, went to the Super Bowl and, and you've won a Super Bowl. And there must be some – things that are the same between both teams like what do you need to have to get to that highest level um, and you got to have a, a really close team that's resilient um, and we had that in New Orleans and, and we have that here now this is probably the, the closest team that I've uh, been a part of um, you've got to you know stay fairly healthy that's something that we've been able to overcome because we we have lost so many guys yeah. uh, to injury um, and you got to be a little bit of, a little bit lucky. Uh, a couple games here or there that you win that you probably shouldn't. Um, and we, we've had a couple of those. You talk about a 61-yard field goal yeah. and, and and different different situations like that. Even in Atlanta, the ball bounces off the defender's knee. Mm -hmm. Torrey Smith catches it. You you need some of those to bounce your way. Um, but you know this team being so close, uh, I think has helped us get through so many things. The injuries, starting out with most of our games on the road. Um, you know, and despite all of the, the negativity and doubt that has come toward this team, we've been able to just kind of, you know, continuously step up to the occasion, continuously be victorious and, and give each other, you know, the credit. Who is your guy when you're having a tough day? Like, who do you call on the team? Uh, I mean, everybody. It's, it's hard to have a tough day around here. Uh, for one, if, you, if you're if you the negative Nancy of the group, everybody's going to message you. <laughs> message you. 
Uh, but it's it's fun, man. We joke around so much and, and have so much fun. It it really is tough to have a a hard day. Uh, but our the DBs is kind of you know my group, and when we get in our room, you know we talk about any and everything. Uh, and so we lean on each other to, to, you know, get that boost of energy if you need it or if you need somebody to talk bad about you to get, to get going, <laughs> the jokes are definitely flowing. Do you guys have a group chat? Like, are you that close? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we got a text message, you know. So we'll, you know, guys will be watching tape. If somebody uh, missed a tackle, like, it'll end up in a group text. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll see something on social media and, and talk about it, but uh, it's pretty fun. Do so you guys send memes and stuff like that? Like, you're that close? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> I love that. So you're a jerk. Jersey guy um when you're in New Jersey you're either like here or there like did you grow up an Eagles fan no my so I'm from what people in Philly would call North Jersey but it's really Central Jersey right up near Rutgers University Piscataway um so my dad was a Giants fan my younger brother was a Jets fan so I was actually a Baltimore fan uh and I got a lot of friends I went to high school with that are split between the Giants and the Eagles yeah um, obviously, everybody in my close circle has now converted to right. be, <laughs> to be an Eagles fan. Right. Everybody's converted uh, happily because those other teams didn't have much success anyway. So, right. uh, but yeah, never really an Eagles fan. So you're kind of playing in your backyard. Like you can have family members come down every week. How is that for you? Uh, it's been good. You know, I had my first daughter two months or two or three months before I got signed here. Um, so being able to come back and have my family, you know, an hour away is just far enough, like, where they're at day. <laughs> right, uh, they're none of your business. Right, but they can come up at any point in time. We can go see them. Uh, it's, been, it's been really nice. So you brought up your daughter. You just had another baby. Congratulations. I'm, like, so happy for you because there's so many amazing things happening in your life, like Super Bowl, new baby. Like, how are you handling that? How are you time managing everything? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's been, a, it's been a challenging year, man. There's been so much uh, work and preparation put in, and it's been a lot of things that have been rewarding as well. So um, it, it definitely, I, I give credit to everybody around me, like my wife, it, you know, we have a newborn. Uh, I'm getting ready for these playoff games, the Super Bowl, and so, you know, she's kind of taking, taking on that uh, burden herself uh, to make sure our house is straight, our yeah. kids are good. Um, you know, I got my mom that is the president of our foundation and doing all this charity work, uh, my manager, India Robinson, PR, Christy Rome. They're handling all of the things that I'm doing, uh, and it allows me to kind of focus, you know, where my feet are. So when I'm at work here, I can focus on the game. When I get home, I can be present. When I'm doing things in the community, I can actually give everything I have. Um, yeah, so I give credit to my team for that one. I feel so bad that I've been harassing you and you have, like, all this stuff going on, and I'm like, Mal, Mal, please. I know how it is. I mean, it's fun times, man, and it's, <laughs> it's you know, the further you go, uh, the more people want to be a part of that, and I, I think that's a good problem to have. Uh, yeah, I don't want to be in a situation where I'm begging you to give me an interview. <laughs> no, like after this, we're, we're good. <laughs> so what's the baby's name? Can you say it for me? Salah. Salah Nola Jenkins. So why that name? What does that mean? Uh, Salah, you see it in the Bible a lot. It really doesn't have a, a known definition, but it's like one of those things you pause and reflect. Um, and then Nola, uh, she, my wife is from Mississippi, but we met uh, when I was in New Orleans and got a lot of love for that city. So uh, we named my second daughter uh, Nola. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how is your wife? Is she okay? She's doing is she going to the game? Oh, yeah. She had, she had <laughs> both of the kids at the NFC Championship down on the field. So I think the baby was probably five days old. <laughs> She's down on the field. Uh, yeah, so they'll be out in Minnesota. So I want to read something that you said on Instagram that was really touching. Every time I think of raising two daughters, I feel excited, afraid, responsible, helpless, and extremely blessed all at the same time. You're in a home surrounded by women. So, so you go from football, testosterone, like hitting, tackling, safety, you know, like all of that. And then you go home to a house full of women. How do you handle that? Is there a switch? Like, how is Malcolm, Daddy Malcolm at home? Yeah, I mean, I had, it, there's definitely, you know, a duality to the way I have to function here, being a leader of men and, you know, alpha males to then going home to a household, you know, full of women and um, just how even being a husband, being a father, how my, you know, daughters look up to me, my oldest is four mm -hmm. and, and just how different she is when we're able to spend 
alone time as right. opposed to when I get too busy and we don't really spend too much time, it, I can tell a difference. Uh, so it's, it's one of those things that I've had to learn to do over the years. Um, but uh, it, there's definitely a, a softer side when I'm at home uh, than, than how I am here. You know how to do her hair? No. See, there's certain things I won't, <laughs> I won't even attempt to. I, I don't. I've helped take down some braids. Okay, I've, good. <laughs> that takes longer for me than anybody else. But, uh, yeah, it's a couple of things I'm not going to attempt, and doing hair is one of them. So I want to talk about your activism right now because I really admire the work that you've put in. And a lot of people um, know that you have your Malcolm Jenkins Foundation, but a lot of the stuff benefits people in the Philadelphia kids, in the Philadelphia and Jersey area, where some other people have foundations, but they don't necessarily benefit this area. So I people know that you're in the community, but I really wanted to talk about your activism activism because you're really trying to change the scope of laws. You're meeting with lawmakers. You met with Congress. You know, can you give us a little update on what's going on on that front? Yeah, the biggest thing is, you know, uh, 2016, after uh, the shooting of Alton Sterling, Philando Castell, and then the, the police officers in Dallas, um, I just wanted to get involved. You know, right now we're at a pivotal time in our country where, you know, there are a ton of divisive uh, issues, whether it be police brutality, um, our criminal justice system, just equality and justice socially uh, and as a whole. And I wanted to figure out how I could be uh, part of the solution to that. And as I've learned um, different things, talk with law enforcement, talk with community leaders, um, one of the main areas that I feel like I can effectuate change is in our criminal justice system. Uh, a lot of our issues that plague communities of color and low income communities is the heavy hand um, that uh, our criminal justice system has on those communities, especially disproportionately affecting people of color. Um, and so we've been able to go to Capitol Hill, D.C., and, and speak with uh, uh, members of both parties about you know what, what are some things that uh, can be done from a legislative standpoint. We've make, taken hit, trips to um, state capital here in Pennsylvania and actually supported a couple bills um, that would help with uh, people trying to come back into society with expunging their records uh, so that they can get equal employment, you know, jobs, housing, education, business loans. You know, all of these things effectuate the quality of life that you have. And, and one thing I learned is how big of a scope it is, is that one in three people over the age of 18 has a criminal record in our country, some kind of uh, arrest record or criminal record. And so when, when you already have these, you know, you're being black or you're a minority and then you add a record to it, it just further disenfranchises you and makes the, the, it puts so many more obstacles in front of you. Um, so while it's not the only cure, you know, thing to cure, it's, it's a big one and we can clear the road for some people um, that are really trying to better themselves. Malcolm Jenkins, the man of the year, in my opinion. <laughs> Listen, hopefully the next time we speak, you'll be a, a second time Super Bowl w winner. Yep. Congratulations on making the Pro Bowl again. And yep. congratulations on everything, the baby, the family. This is a good time for you. Sit down, enjoy it, soak it all up. All right. Definitely. Malcolm Jenkins, I'm Mina Say What Lona. Thank you for watching.